That is such a cool fade out before the end. Dynamics, right? Yeah. That's something we were talking about in the last episode. And I have to say something about ghost notes again, which is what we were talking about in the last episode. Most of the snare usage in this track is ghost notes. It's kind of like a, a swing drummer, actually, where he accents the snare combined with crashing on a cymbal. It's very, mm. very swing. Wait, that's also kind of metal. Lars Ulrich. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is the theme of the episode, maybe I could ask what makes this metal. And I can't really hear it in the guitars, except for those guitar chords in the beginning. They're kind of snappy. It was like... Blink, 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 blink. It kind of reminds me of like Voivod or something. Yeah, it's it's kind of a dissonant chord. I, I don't I don't know. I don't have a good ear for this kind of thing, but I'm gonna guess they're dominant chords. And there's yeah. tritones in that. Yeah, it sounds like rich and like dissonancy. But like the drums are just like really busy and hard hitting. Yeah, and that part is the, what I'm talking about with that. This accents on the snares is on those hits of those chords. He's hitting a he's crashing on the cymbal and accenting on the snare. Right, right. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. I believe that actually is guitar harmonies. From what I hear, it's the voice is doubling one of the leads, and then there's another lead guitar below harmonizing. As we mentioned earlier, Wishbone Ash was engineered by Martin Birch, who also worked with Deep Purple on In Rock and Machine Head. So Machine Head was the sixth studio album by Deep Purple. It was recorded at Montreux in the Rolling Stones mobile studio. We learned this is what Smoke on the Water was about. So they booked the Montreux Casino as a venue during a Frank Zappa show. Immediately before their recording session, the casino burned to the ground. And this was during the time when they were recording their album. I've known about this story for a long time. Like everyone hears this song on the radio like, I mean, I've heard it on the radio like a million times. I've known the story of the whole like Frank Zappa and the Mothers show. Like it's in the lyrics. It's in the lyrics, yeah. But then I never knew what he was talking about when he says mobile. So it's it's a mobile studio owned by the Rolling Stones. It's like, I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of weird. And then it's very interesting, actually. <laughs> yeah, first of all, there's a mobile studio. Does anyone do that anymore? That was groundbreaking at the time yeah and apparently this mobile studio recorded a bunch of bands yeah, yeah. like who else like Fleetwood Mac or something okay so the Rolling Stones mobile studio recorded the Who Dire Straits Deep Purple Lou Reed Bob Marley Fleetwood Mac Bad Company Led Zeppelin Iron Maiden Wishbone Ash Motorhead and of course the Rolling Stones themselves Wishbone Ash yeah <laughs> okay yeah, so it was really cool because I guess a lot of bands, they were booking too much time in studios. This was a way for them to like book a room at a hotel and then the mobile studio could just be there for them. Right. So it was a lot cheaper for a and lot of them. More convenient. And yeah. more convenient, yeah. yeah. I wonder how they like recorded drums in there. It was a big, I don't know. I know, it's not very big. If you look on Wikipedia, there's a little picture of like the console and the chair. And it is like the width of a mobile home, so. Huh, well, yeah. this is reminding me of, is remember Jam in the Van? Oh, like yeah. A YouTube channel where the, a band plays like a studio session inside a van. Mm -hmm. I think it eventually became not a van. Sort of like Tiny Desk isn't, wasn't really a Tiny Desk anymore eventually. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, tangent. I want to say more about Deep Purple. So In Rock was the first album where the band can convince their label to let them self-produce. And this is the first album that they worked on with Martin Birch. Mm. Oh, so Deep Purple produced it, but uh, Martin Birch was the engineer. Yeah. Okay. Mm. And I this see. was the album where I mentioned that he just encouraged them to play loud and overdrive all of the meters, yeah. which led to that characteristic sound. Yeah. And that was something we were talking about in the last episode too. Technology at the time kind of dictated what recordings would sound like. We mentioned marimba recordings and like ragtime. If we want to reproduce a 70s sound, you sort of need analog equipment. Yeah. Yeah. They enjoyed working with him so much that they invited him back for Machine Head. So our track that we're going to listen to today is Pictures of Home. And so what do you have to say about that track? This track is... It's one of my favorite tracks on this album, and maybe it's because it's not Smoke on the Water. I've like heard that song a million times. Overplayed. Yeah, to the point where I don't really enjoy it anymore, but I guess it was a good song. <laughs> it's just kind of overplayed. Highway Star is on this album too, and that's a really cool song as Great well. Great solo. Yeah, amazing solo. But I really like the drumming on this song. It's like a shuffle, 
And again, Ian Pace, the drummer, very jazzy as well. He does a lot of ghost notes, a lot of syncopated accents. And I don't know, I just think his drum fills in this song are so sick. And again, kind of like in the last track we listened to, there's a lot of dynamics with the whole band going on. They like fade out and fade back in. There's a bass solo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot of, go- a lot of stuff going on in this track. It's really exciting and, in my opinion, pretty metal. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just point out that for our listeners that you should probably be listening to these songs with headphones. What do you think the listeners should look out for for this song? What stands out to me in this track in the drums is the snare. I really like the snare like and the way he plays it. Pay attention to the drum fills. It's so clean. You could hear accents and ghost notes, but he seems so precise. This guy knows his rudiments, obviously. <laughs> okay. Let's listen to Pictures of Home by Deep Purple. <laughs> 